dudes. Green trees are expensive. Cages are expensive. I have an awesome alternative for you. Check it out. So we all know by now that I'm a big fan of the products that David Brahms at Specialty Enclosure Designs makes. I've done a handful of reviews here on the channel about his stuff. Well, I have another one. This one is gonna be a first. Um, I think I'm the first person outside of David to actually put this together and build it and use it. And it is this tub conversion kit. So basically, quick rundown. 200 quart Sterilite tub, uh, 40 watt Bavarium Electronics heat panel, hobby stat, glass, perch holders, perches, depending on what you're putting in the cage. But real quick, we'll just, we'll kind of jump into it and then I'll talk about some of the things that I like the most about this. So the nice thing about David's products, especially with these tub conversion kits, is they come with the hardware. So what will come in this kit, it's gonna come with five of these pieces. Uh, so you have a bottom track, you have a top track. The top track is deeper in the groove. I'm not gonna be able to show you that because you're probably not gonna be able to tell. So originally I was gonna do 30 inch across the top and 10 inches on the side, but made a miscalculation when I was cutting. So I ended up dropping it down to 26 inches across and 10 inches deep. And obviously, as you can see, that's more than enough room. So the process of actually building it is really straightforward. What you do first is you cut your pieces uh, to whatever length you need for the tub. You cut those, you put all your, your brackets together. So the center bracket that holds the two pieces in the middle together. You can't see them. Six screws on the top. Then you have your corner brackets, which have three on the top, two on the side. And then once that's in, you then trace the inside of the opening on your tub. Then I took a Dremel tool, one of the, just one of the small handheld Dremels uh, with a little wheel bit. And I traced actually on the outside of that trace line as you'll see here, if you screw up this line right here, it's not really gonna matter that much. Like it doesn't have to be exact if there's like a small dip or if you miscut it or, you know, whatever. If you have trouble coloring inside the lines like I do, it doesn't really, it's not crucial that it has to be dead straight with that line because as long as you still have enough space here to attach the screws and stuff, you're good to go. So if you did that with, uh, by doing it inside the line, you'd probably see it more often. Like you, you'd see those, this, those miscuts so I highly recommend doing it outside the line. So then once you have it cut, the screws that are provided, you attach, there's, I think I did uh, eight on the top and then I did four on the bottom. So I'm running eight screws across here, four screws down here. And I mean, this thing is on there, like it's really sturdy. So it happens that this 200 quart tub works perfectly because you have this little beveled edge right here and it just, just meets up at the bottom to where there's enough of a gap. I mean, that's maybe maybe an inch, probably more like a half inch if I had to guess. So they fit perfectly with this beveled edge. And originally I was gonna use one of these 100 quarter Sterilites, but they have the they have a weird kind of a warp in the middle, so that wouldn't really work with that door because then if I had used that, you'd have a gap right here. And I mean, unless it's a bigger snake, that's not really as big of a deal. Personally, I want to flush. But then after that, once it was cut, once the frame was attached, I just took the whole tub to my local glass store. Uh, David obviously can't provide the glass because he doesn't know exactly what your dimensions are gonna be. Glass is cheap, it's really not that expensive. I got both these paints for this for $17. I just took the entire thing to my local glass shop. They did it overnight. I picked it up the next day and it's perfect. Looks really good, they did a fine job with it. And I mean, this thing goes all the way, all the way in. They measured it perfectly, no issues. So then the next order business after that was attaching the heat panel, which you can see is just bolted on with screws here. Now, someone brought up a good point on MVF when I posted about this, about it warping the lid. Uh, and it may do that. I'm assuming, my thinking is, and I could be wrong about this because I'm not a physicist or anything like that, obviously, is if that is the case, then I'll just get a sheet, a small square of PVC uh, board that's roughly the same size as the, uh, as the heat panel. And I'll just put that between the lid and the heat panel and hopefully that'll fix that issue. But I mean, we'll see. I'm, I'm not thinking there's gonna be any issues. I have it bolted on there pretty tight. I'm keeping this about 82, which is where I like to keep my adult green trees, like this girl. So I'm gonna keep an eye on that. It could warp, it might, I don't know, we'll find out. But either way, it's still a cheap fix, it's still an easy fix. So then what I did for the heat panel 
which you can see here. Like I said, that's a 40 watt Bavarian Electronics. Some people like Pro Panels, some people like the VE ones. I don't have a particular preference. I've really only used the VE, so I can't really speak on that. And so then what I did in the back was I drilled a hole. I run my uh, probe zip tied to that perch under the hot spot. That'll keep it where I want it, you know, in that general area. And then of course, I'm running David's magnetic perches. I made the dumb mistake. These usually have two little prongs right here that go into the tub to keep it from shifting around. Without that, they do slide more than I thought they would, so I do not advise cutting those off, and I advise leaving them and drilling your holes so that they fit. Uh, those magnetic perch holders come with a little spacer to make sure you get those holes right. I love those magnetic perch holders because I can move them around if I need to. They're not permanent. They're not like the other ones over here, which I also do like, which these are bolted in to the back. So I could move those if I wanted to, but the magnetic ones make cleaning a little easier if I need to. You know, they're removable. I can put them back. No big deal. And so then for perches, I am just running... Uh, this is just some some crepe myrtle down here in South Carolina crepe myrtle trees are everywhere It's a very hard wood. I love using it for cages not expecting to have any issues But again schedule 40 PVC at the half inch size Which is what these perch holders are made for is crazy cheap and it would be like an extra six dollars to add this to the setup <clears throat> And so then before everyone kind of freaks out about my water bowl This is the one that was in this guy's old setup He's gonna be getting a larger one. Y'all know with my green trees, I like to use oversized water bowls. Helps with humidity in general. Um, I like to go to Walmart and get the biggest ones possible. I think I have one here. I forget the brand, Walmart sells them. The big ones are, the big ones are like seven bucks. They're massive. I like oversized water bowls for my green trees of any size. I, I don't have many shedding issues. I don't have issues with them finding the water bowl. They just work out for me. And then I guess I wouldn't be wouldn't be much of a chondro video if I didn't show you the male that's in here. So this is Theta Wave. He was a red neonate. He was a, uh, just an import that I got from a local shop uh, going on two years now. It has been two years actually. So hopefully he'll be re he should be ready to breed next year. Uh, there's a good chance I'll pair him with the big girl that I got eggs from this year. But now I want to get into why I think these are a superior... Uh, alternative to PVC cages if you have a lot of animals if you don't have a huge budget to spend on a giant PVC cage let's get into it obviously this isn't a chondro this is my male one of my male brettles figured I'd change it up do something a little different this week so the total cost on that tub if you had bought everything for it as is like you just saw so I paid $20 for the tub you would pay probably six dollars or so for the PVC pipe for the purchases if that's what you used uh, the VE heat panel ranges from $65 to $69 for either the 28 watt or the 40 watt. I wouldn't go any higher than either of those. They probably are going to be too big and they're going to be too much. Uh, I got the $50 hobby stat, which is also from Reptile Basics. The VE heat panel is from Reptile Basics. So if you buy both of those together, if you spend over $100, you get free shipping through them. The frame itself, David sells for about $40, not including shipping. The magnetic perch holders are another $11 if that's the route you go. Glass was $17. For the entire setup, whole shebang, heat, all that stuff, it'd be around $209, give or take. That's not including shipping, like I said, that's that's just for the, the actual products itself. My only gripe with these setups, and it's not even really a gripe because it's really not that important, is lighting. Uh, as you can see, to light that would be kind of Maybe not necessarily difficult, but it would require another couple extra steps and making sure it's a way that you can add lighting without it being without with it uh, making sure it's secure so that this you know the snake doesn't manage to push its way out. I'm trying to wrangle this guy while I read my phone is not working. So some of the uh, pros to these compared to PVC cages is they're lightweight. Uh, PVC cages really aren't that heavy in the grand scheme of things compared to glass enclosures, but these take it a step further and they're even lighter. Also, because it's a storage box, they're already waterproof. If you've ever bought a PVC cage from any of the companies, they almost always require you to seal the corners and the edges, at least on the bottom, because if, when you mist or you spray anything down that's in those PVC cages, usually they leak all over the place. So that's another step that you don't have to do. That silicone takes a few days to cure and really air out because it does throw off some pretty noxious fumes. So with these, that's not an issue. That's not even a concern. And because it's a tub and it doesn't have the bottom seams, like I said, you don't have to worry about leaking. 
And in addition to that, because they're usually rounded bottoms on those tubs, that means that cleaning is easier. You don't have urates or snake grab or anything like that building up in those corners where you really gotta scrub it with something. It's just, it's a, a rounded corner so it's easier to get, get into and do what you need. Uh, one other thing about these that I like compared to PVC cages is you have the front access, but you also have the top access. So if you're doing anything, like you need to make any changes, you have access to both. Having that option, while I'm, you know, I may rarely go into the through the top of the cage, uh, which with the Draco portal up here, I do when I clean, just because it's easier. I take the whole tub down. It's a small tub. It's easy to do. With this. I'm probably not gonna have to take the lid off for anything unless I'm changing anything up with the heat panel. So, even better, you have that option if you need it. And obviously, because I just outlined the cost, they're a lot cheaper than PVC cages. Even fully assembled with everything you need, you're saving, even for just a basic, like, baseline, just the PVC, just the doors, you're probably gonna be spending about 250 bucks. A PVC cage of the same size as that is still gonna cost more without the heat panel, without the thermostat, without the perches, without the perch holders, it's still gonna be more expensive than this with everything included. So it's kind of a no-brainer when it comes to that kind of stuff. God, Brittles don't sit still, ever. This is my buddy though, I love this guy. Being tubs, and being that the frame is simply attached to the tub, if anything happens to the tub, instead of having to buy an entire new cage or new hinges or anything like that that you would have to replace on a PVC cage, you can literally pop off the frame with the glass in it. Well, you take the glass out before you popped it out, but you can easily affix everything to a new tub. It's almost inter, well, I guess it is interchangeable. Changeable, you know, something happens to that tub, maybe the lid warps or something. I can go to Walmart and buy a new tub for $20, fix whatever needs to be fixed to keep it from happening again, and you're in business. Which ties into the fact that finding Sterilite tubs of a similar size really isn't that difficult but that also makes life a lot easier because if you do find a tub that's a different size, you can customize that frame to whatever size you want it to be. So if it's a smaller tub, if it's a longer tub, if it's a taller tub, you can get that kit and you can make that door literally whatever size you want and whatever size is, is comfortable, you're comfortable with. These Sterilites in particular, these 200 quarts are stackable, which is even nicer. Even with those bolts in there holding that RHP in there, I don't see you having an issue stacking those as they are. They're big tubs. You could easily keep an adult male chondro in there. You could reasonably keep an adult female if you wanted to, like a bigger biak like my girl over my uh, my shoulder here. That would be a little small for her, but she's a pretty big snake. Smaller localities and smaller females would do great in that. That male who's in there now, he's going to be in there probably for the rest of his life. Like he's just he's set. And similar to PVC. If you need to make any changes to anything, you can cut and you can drill tubs all day long. It's not impossible to do. You don't necessarily need a crazy, you know, big saw to cut through half inch PVC or inch, inch thick PVC. So that is another bonus to having the tubs. So what species would I use these for? Well, that's the awesome thing about these. If you have anything remotely arboreal, semi-arboreal, fully arboreal, these tubs and these kits, these conversion kits, will do awesome. You could keep carpets in them. Uh, I think Jake, after talking to him about this one, he's already planning on getting a handful for all his carpets. Brettles, if you wanted to. Amazon tree boas, they'd be great for, even adults. Uh, I plan on putting my boiga in there at some point. Chondros, emerald tree boas. I mean, you name it. If, like, scrub pythons, if they're smaller. These, these conversion kits, those 200 quart tubs even. They're a great size for a lot of species, especially if they like, they appreciate room and they appreciate space to climb. My plan is to definitely get more of them and make more of them. I definitely plan to get more species in them. And uh, I mean, they look really sharp. Yeah, it's a tub. It's not a PVC cage. PVC cages do look nice. I have nothing against them, but they do add up. And with chondros especially, chondros are already expensive snakes. We all know that. But having another option that looks, that looks decent but that also doesn't break the bank. You can't beat it. David knocked it out of the park again with these. I say it looks better than I thought it would, and that's not saying that I thought it was gonna look bad, but I knew it would look sharp, but when I finished this thing and got that snake in there, I was really surprised because it, it looked better than I had, you know, had thought it would originally, which I was already having high expectations for it. Uh, so the build time for this took me probably 
with the help of my dad because he's an engineer and he's much better at measuring and cutting things five times rather than me who will measure once and cut 20 times. It took us probably a solid hour and a half or so, give or take, to put this thing together and then adding the heat panel and everything was an extra 10 minutes. If you have the tools and stuff, it's a breeze. I highly recommend them. I'm gonna be using them for all kinds of stuff. I love them. It's a great, great deal. Awesome product. They look good. I, uh, I, you know, David continually blows my mind with the stuff he's he's popping out and he's he's making uh, his designs and stuff and bringing ideas to him and seeing them kind of come to life. Especially with like the mini hook that y'all have seen. He's he's really doing a lot of good stuff and I'm 100% behind him. I, you know, I tell him all the time. I think I might be his biggest fan. If you guys want to get your hands on one of these, I'll leave links to everything in the comments below and if you have any questions leave them in the comments and i'll get to them as soon as i can uh, be sure to subscribe as usual hit the like button all that good stuff follow me on facebook and instagram at palmetto coast exotics thank you